As you can see on the y-axis of the graph, each point represents a player's average score for points, assists, and rebounds combined for their previous year of NBA. For instance, Shaq's point on the graph is 34, which means he averaged 21 points, 12 rebounds, and 1 assist per game while he was playing for Louisiana State University. Do you understand how the graph works now? Now let's take a look at the graph. Starting from the bottom, we have Carl Anthony Towns with 18 points. Moving up a bit, we have Knicks legend Patrick Ewing with 25 points. Above him is Allen Iverson with 30 points. And then we have Chinese giant Yao Ming at the very top with a massive 35 points while playing for the Shanghai Sharks. And who's sitting at the very top of the graph, completely isolated? That's right, it's LeBron James with an astonishing 45 points. But where is Victor Wembanyama on this graph, you might ask? Well, let me tell you, here he is. No, no, I'm just joking. Here's Victor Wembanyama with 36 points. But don't be fooled by the placement. You need to understand that Victor averaged this point total at LNB Pro A, the French top league similar to the NBA in the United States. In contrast, LeBron averaged 45 points during his high school days. I'm not trying to say that Victor is a better prospect than LeBron. We're just presenting you with the actual stats. Big name shoe companies like Nike, Adidas, and Puma try to sign top players even before they're drafted with massive amounts of money. This is the chart for most expensive shoe deal signed by rookies. The x-axis represents the years, while the y-axis represents the dollar amount in millions. At the bottom, you can see Tracy McGrady, who signed a six-year $12 million deal with Adidas in 1994. Little to the right is Vince Carter, who signed a $25 million deal with Puma in 1998, and recently Zion signed a five-year $75 million deal with Jordan Brand. Like in the previous chart, LeBron James is completely isolated at the top with a massive $90 million deal with Nike in 2003. But where is Victor Wembanyama? Well, he still hasn't signed any shoe deals yet, but many reports are suggesting that he will sign the biggest rookie deal in NBA history worth over $100 million. That's a huge amount of money for a player who hasn't even entered the NBA yet. When a player performs well, two things happen. The player's net worth increases, and the franchise's value also grows. This means that a single player can change the destiny of an entire franchise, just like Michael Jordan completely changed the Chicago Bulls. To illustrate this, let's take a look at the chart. The x-axis represents the franchise, and the y-axis represents the team's net worth in millions. Before LeBron James was drafted, the Cleveland Cavaliers' net worth was $200 million. However, after they drafted LeBron, in just two seasons, their team value increased to $258 million. The same thing happened with the Milwaukee Bucks when they signed Giannis Antetokounmpo in just two seasons, their value went from $312 million to $600 million. Recently, the Dallas Mavericks net worth increased by $350 million in just two seasons after they drafted Luka Doncic. And now, according to many reports, the team will draft Victor Wembanyama, which is expected to increase their franchise value by at least $500 million from now on. It's amazing to see the impact that a single player can have on a franchise's net worth. And it's not just about the money. A great player can also bring in more fans, increase merchandise sales, and bring more attention to the team. In basketball, there's always a contrast between tall players and three-pointers. Due to their immense body and height, they can't seem to shoot precisely. Here's a chart showing the three-point percentage of top seven foot or above NBA players. On the y-axis, you can see the player's three-point percentage. At the bottom, we have some of the top rim protectors in the NBA, like Rudy Gobert, Dikembe Mutombo, Robert Parrish, and Mark Eaton who have 0% of three-pointers. A little higher, we have Shaq with 4.5% and Kareem with 5.6%. And a little higher still, we have Hakeem Olajuwon with 20.2%. 
but if we look a little higher up, we can see some good 7-foot 3-point shooters like Dirk Nowitzki, Lori Markkinen, Porzingis, and Nikola Jokic. And here we have Victor Wembanyama, sitting at an impressive 32.2% 3-point average. Now, this doesn't mean that Victor is the worst shooter out of all the players, as some players have a higher 3-point percentage, but standing at 7 foot 4 and averaging 32.2% is insane. You might be wondering if Victor is able to keep up this level of shooting in the NBA, considering he achieved this average in LNB Pro A. But it's always difficult to maintain a high 3-point percentage at that height. Let's see how Victor performs in the NBA. Have you ever wondered how well tall players shoot free throws? Here's a chart showing the free throw percentage of 7 foot and above NBA players. On the Y axis, you can see the player's free throw percentage. At the bottom, we have tackle fall with the worst percentage at 32%. A little higher, we have one dominant NBA player, Shaq, with 52.7%. And if we look a little higher up, we can see other top 7 foot and above NBA players. And here we have Victor Wembanyama, sitting at an impressive 81.1% free throw average. As we all know, height is a significant advantage in basketball, but it also comes with its own set of risks, especially when it comes to injuries. We've seen some of the tallest players in NBA history struggle with various injuries throughout their careers. According to the chart, players who are 6 foot 3 and below missed 14.7% of games, while players who are between 6 foot 4 and 6 foot 7 missed 15.1% of games. Players who are between 6 foot 8 and 6 foot 11 missed 14.2% of games, while players who are over 7 feet tall missed a whopping 23.5% of games due to injury. So what does this mean for the future of the NBA? Well, it's clear that tall players are at a higher risk of getting injured on the court. This is particularly concerning for young players, like Victor Wembanyama, who stands at an impressive 7 foot 4. We hope that players like Wembanyama can stay healthy and injury free so they can continue to dominate the court and inspire the next generation of basketball players. Let's discuss an interesting chart that represents the height and weight of NBA players. The x-axis of this chart represents the weight of NBA players, while the y-axis represents their height. You can see all NBA players fall between these two lines which means that their body height and weight are perfect for playing in the NBA. At the bottom of the chart, we see Dennis Schroeder, followed by Steph Curry a little higher up. Then we see Luka Doncic and Kevin Durant, followed by the all-time great LeBron James. On the left, we see Ball Ball. And on the far right, completely isolated on the chart, we see Boban Marjanovic. Currently, there are only three players outside the line. Zion Williamson, Chet Holmgren, and our boy, Victor Wembanyama. Players who fall outside of this line are at a greater risk of injury because their weight and height are completely opposite of what is considered optimal for NBA players. We know Zion missed almost his entire rookie season because of injury, and we all remember what happened to Chet Holmgren. Currently, Wembanyama is also under the threat of injuries because he's outside of this line. However, it's not just about injuries. To perform well, Wembanyama needs to gain much muscle mass. We've seen similar transformations with other players, like Giannis, who was not very efficient until he bulked up and started dominating the NBA. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today as we took a closer look at Victor Wembanyama, one of the most exciting young players in basketball. And until next time, keep watching. Keep cheering on your favorite players.